You're watching Poland Daily Business, and our guest tonight is uh, Professor Alan Riley of Atlantic Council. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, we'll talk tonight about uh, energy policy, obviously. You are a worldwide known mm -hmm. expert. I'm not. And when I hear that Germany needs to diversify their energy sources, which for Germany, from the Berlin point of view, means that they need to buy more from Russia. Uh, to my untrained mind, it's a contradictory statement, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, I think the way to look at it, it, is look, it, it does look very strange, and there are good reasons for that, <laughs> is that because it, it is in many ways a myth. The point about Nord Stream 2 is that it is producing very little new gas for, uh, or any new, any gas at all. Uh, for um, uh, for Germany. The point about Nord Stream 2 is this. The aim of it is you put that on uh, under the sea, through the Baltic Sea, you get it running, and then you close the Ukrainian uh, transit network. So the point is there is no new gas. All you're doing is diverting gas from one pipeline to the other pipeline. So it's completely not, it's not actually adding gas to Europe. And the other point of view, from Germany's own interest, you've got to ask, what on earth do they think they're doing? Currently, you have Nord Stream 1, the Yamal pipeline, which goes through Belarus and then into Poland, and you have the Ukrainian transit network. So Germany potentially has gas from three different routes, which is very good. The more diversity you've got, the better it is. What the Nord Stream 2 would do is essentially you would go from having three routes to two routes, because essentially Nord Stream 2 follows the same route as Nord Stream 1. And worse still, the great advantage of the Ukrainian network is that it's huge. It's got, uh, Nord Stream 2 is 55 billion cubic meters of capacity. The Ukrainian route is 146 billion cubic meters of capacity, and it's got 32 billion cubic meters of storage. Now, the point about that is that means that in winter, uh, when there's shortage of demand, shortage of supply, you can surge capacity through the Ukrainian system or through the, from the storages into Europe. And that's going to be more important as we use more renewables and you have more intermittency uh, with uh, wind and solar. So the, the, the advantage of it is really significant. You wouldn't want to get rid of any, in any energy security uh, manner, the Ukrainian network. But that's the objective of Nord Stream 2. Right. It undermines Mm -hmm. yeah. undermining the uh, Ukrainian network. That's enormous asset for Ukraine in its conflict with Russia. And do you expect, for example, Russia uh, starting the hot war in Ukraine with the aim of destroying that network? Well, the, the point about it, and this is one of the other dangers of this situation, is that the, at, the mo at any time uh, um, in, the, in Ukraine, because you know, there isn't one Ukrainian pipeline, there's a network of pipelines, which also enhances supply security across Ukraine. And at any one time, there's hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Russian gas transiting across the Ukrainian network. If that no longer is transited, if that's no longer there, it makes it much easier to extend military operations across much more of Ukraine. I mean, that is the first thing. The second thing is, is that if there is a legal battle over Nord Stream 2 uh, in the European courts and it's delayed, one can see the incentive once Nord Stream 2 is built for um, Moscow to create facts on the ground in Ukraine, taking out part of the infrastructure. And I think that's the, uh, that's the other danger with this. So the kind of cork was removed from the box and gin is out there. Exactly. That is the danger. We'll see. <clears throat> Does Ukraine have some options? Can it uh, transfer or gas from other suppliers through its network to Western Europe? Well, one of the advantages um, uh, I think uh, that uh, Ukraine has, it has huge amounts of storage capacity. I said 32 billion cubic meters, which is actually in Western Ukraine, largely in Western Ukraine. So one of the possibilities is to uh, increase the number of interconnectors um, between Ukraine and Poland. Um, and that's, that's one way. I mean, particularly, you know, there's going to be the Baltic pipeline, which is coming on stream next year. Um, there is uh, the possibility of putting more LNG terminals into the Baltic states. All of these things can put Ukraine in a much, and, and Ukraine and Poland and the whole region 
in a, in, a, in, a, in a better place. I mean, one of the strategies, I think, for the Polish government is to see Nord Stream 2, OK, it is a threat, but it's also a potential opportunity to turn uh, Poland into Central and Eastern Europe's um, energy security hub, where yes. it has the pipelines, it has the Three Seas Initiative pipeline north and south, it has LNG terminals, and so together they're able to provide an alternative source of supply to uh, Russian gas. That's a very interesting point of view. Uh, Professor, thank you very much for this conversation. That was it for our um, evening business news. That's true. Thank Professor you. Alan Riley was our guest tonight, a worldwide known expert on energy security. That was it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow.